Hey everybody, today I wanted to go over how to enable FIPS on an already built Linux machine. Uh, the machine I'm on is CentOS 7, and this process is specific to Red Hat. Um, Red Hat 8 has a much easier process than this. It's like one command and then you reboot, but this is for Red Hat 7 and CentOS 7 as well as uh, 6 and lower versions. Alright, so first and foremost, you're going to want to make sure you have the Dracut FIPS package. And once you've installed that, you're going to want to rebuild your initram FS. So to do that, it's actually recommended that you do a backup before. You know, maybe move it to just a .back file and uh, then go ahead and do this piece here. Um, but to, to generate a new initram FS, we run the dracut -f command. And the dash V is just for verbose. So let's go ahead and do that now that we have all the associated packages. In the uh, Dracut FIPS package we I initially installed, it has the kernel mo modules necessary. Okay. So we have generated a new initramfs image file. So now what we need to do is add the FIPS equals one option to the Etsy default grub file. All right, and that's what this file looks like. We're gonna be adding the FIPS equals one on right after this line. We can get rid of quiet if we want. Um, but before we do that, we also need to tell the system where to actually boot from and Let's just see what I have mounted currently. Okay, so we only have slash boot with uh, slash boot slash EFI. If it's on a separate partition, you also need to specify that in the Etsy default grub file. But anyways, since we only have slash boot, let's go ahead and see what partition that is. So that's on dev SDA1. Let's get the actual UUID of that. Because sometimes when you reboot a Linux system, uh, the device names say the same, but the UIDs, uh, I'm sorry, the UUIDs say the same, but the device names might change, might change. Anyways, it's a better practice to use the UUID of the partition as opposed to using just the name slash dev slash SDA1. So let's edit the Etsy default grub file. Let's get rid of the quiet option. I actually like to see when the system's booting. And... Uh, so we're going to tell it to boot from that UUID and we're also going to add the FIPS equals 1 option and that will enforce FIPS compliance throughout the whole boot process. Alright so once you've edited that file you actually need to make changes to the associated configuration files and those can be found here under slash boot. For this system it's uh, under grub2, it's going to be a grub.cfg file. However, on an EFI system, it's going to be located under slash boot, slash lowercase EFI, slash uppercase EFI, slash red hat, slash grub.cfg. Anyways, we got to run this command with a dash O switch. And right now, we're going to be adding the changes that we just made to this file to this grub configuration file. Alright, so now that that is done, we should be able to reboot our system with FIPS enabled. And to check if FIPS is enabled as it stands right now, there's a file here. Okay, so this, this tells you that it's not enabled currently. It says zero in this file. If it is enabled, it would say one. Anyways, let's go ahead and reboot. And I'll make sure to keep this stream running in case I run into any issues so you guys understand the troubleshooting process. Alright, the system came back up just fine, which to me means that FIPS is now enabled and we're not having any issues. So if this is what you're here for, feel free to exit the video. However, I'm going to go over some troubleshooting steps just in case our system didn't boot properly. I'm going to uh, show you. First, let's just verify that this is actually 
FIPS enabled. Okay, so now we see a one. Uh, we do have FIPS enabled on this system. Alright, so let's pretend in the boot process, you know, you started seeing FIPS integrity errors and it's not fully booting. What you want to do here at this screen is press E on that first kernel command line option. It brings you to this page where you can edit all these options of how the system boots. So uh, go ahead and look for where you added that FIPS option before. Go ahead and remove FIPS. And then if you wanted to from here, you can also do an rd.break. And I guess we should actually just go over that. Uh, do control X to continue the boot once you've made those changes. And right now we're booted into the emergency target, essentially. So we need to actually remount the root file system. To do that, you can do this command first and foremost, a mount with a dash O switch. And then we're going to do a remount. The dash O switch is mount options, and the mount option we're using is remount, and we're remounting it with read write permissions. And we will be mounting sysroot. And then you also have to do a ch root to sysroot to actually get a nice shell. So, anyways, you can begin troubleshooting from here. You know, you're in this nice emergency target. A ton of the services that the system typically has on are not started right now, so it is a limited environment. But if you needed to from here, you could always go into Etsy Default Grub, remove the FIPS option, which I'll just do. Okay, now that that's removed, just type exit twice to continue the boot process with these new parameters. Alright, so this is one of the ways to rescue your system if you do have any hiccups in this process. So from here, we're back to actually square one. And you can always rerun through the process, but your system is still alive. And just to verify that FIPS is not enabled, it says zero here.